Hey, Kent Kentley here to wave and say hello as we uh, finish The Whispering Mountain. I'm really sorry it's taken so long and I have no excuse other than lack of motivation, to, which is really the worst reason to not do anything is because you're not motivated to, because sometimes you just got to push through. And um, I want to thank everybody that's that's written in about other videos that they've been watching on this channel. And of course, I will keep doing them. But anyway, the end of The Whispering Mountain. Tom Dando has died and the Prince of Wales has offered to take in Erebus. A few minutes later, little Abapal, carrying the harp of Terra II, came stealing cautiously out of one of the smallest caves where he had been hiding. Timid as a wild goat, but drawn, it seemed, by some powerful urge, he approached the silent group, scanning them, evidently searching for somebody. Perceiving Tom stretched out on a rock, he hurried forward and held out the harp, then stopped short. Started, crept nearer with a cry of anguish, flung down the harp at Tom's feet and sank beside it, wailing and keening and rocking back and forth, as if he, too, had received a mortal wound. When, some time later, the party at last slowly and sadly made their way out of the cave into the street of Nantagardau, they were amazed to see that a great piece of snow-covered mountainside had broken away and rolled down, narrowly missing the town and leaving a clear view all the way to Kerr Malin. Even more startling, Castle Malin on its crag above the port appeared to be in ruins, roofless and shattered. It will be the central heating pipes, concluded Mr. Hughes. When that rock fell down the shaft, it will have displaced a great mass of steam which escaped along the pipes and blew the castle to bits. I dare say there is no one who will grieve. My little people, cried the Seljuk anxiously. Oh, my goodness, I trust they have come to no harm. Hurt, mischief, ill, that flesh is heir to. Come, Yehemelik, we must return to them at once. Not too easy through all this snow, Brother Ianto remarked. Best to go back underground, maybe, if the way is clear. Erebus, coming out of her private grief, said that she would accompany the Seljuk. So did Owen and Ribaldi. So did Owen and Ribidi. Now recovered after his night's sleep, they were worried about Abapal. He had followed the party through the streets of Nantagardau and would not leave the boar's head in where Tom's body lay. But soon, at the door, crying with the harp in his arms, refusing to enter or leave, and snarling at anyone who approached him. Best leave him for the moment, maybe, said Brother Ianto. The underground way was clear, and the children of the pit, snug in their caves, had not been harmed by the destruction of the castle up above, though greatly alarmed by the fearful sound of escaping steam and falling masonry. Their illness continued to abate, and much relieved, while Erebus and Owen tended them, the Seljuk went down to Port Malin to make arrangements for a ship to take them all home to the Kingdom of Rum. By, great, by good fortune, he was able to secure one which would be ready to sail the following week. Finding the tribe so much better, Erebus did not give them any more medicines, but instead, as this was what they seemed to want most, spent the rest of the day playing them tunes on her cruth. Owen, tired out by two days and a night without sleep, dozed on a camel for a cushion nearby. At evening, they returned to Nantagardau, where the Prince of Wales had been making arrangements for Tom Dando's funeral. Luckily, a messenger had arrived from London in the course of the day to say that King James III had recovered from his toothache and found the key of his desk. Galahad and the wagon had been moved to the stable yard of the Boar's Head Inn. Owen, anxious to spare Erebus some of the pain of the return to the empty house, accompanied her there. They found that kindly Brother Ianto, with the same idea, had come to light the stove and make a pot full of porridge. Passenger you have now, too, he said, nodding toward the corner. Squatting on Tom Dando's bunk, with arms round his knees, was the woe-begone figure of Abapal, his face brightened through the whiskers at the sight of Erebus. Told him you were Tom's daughter, I did, Brother Ianto explained. Seeing Erebus unsling the crew from her back, Abapal brightened some more. He seemed astonished to be given a bowl of porridge, but ate it with a good deal of enjoyment. The moment it was finished... However, he made his way to the cruth and began plucking at it experimentally. Then he brought it to Erebus with such a beseeching expression that even in her sorrow she could not help smiling. She played him two or three tunes, and a look of such ineffable satisfaction spread over his face that Brother Ianto said, 
Lodger for life you have, I am thinking. I do not believe he will go back to rum with the others. Why shouldn't he if he does not want to go, said Erebus? Welcome he is to stay here. One or twice, Abapal looked hopefully at the harp of Terra II, which he had with him in Tom Dando's bunk, but Erebus shook her head. Learn to play it one day, I will, she told him. But too soon it is now, see. And he seemed to understand. Then Erebus looked past him, discovered something missing. Dada's poem, she cried anxiously. Not to worry about it, Brother Iantos said. His Highness have borrowed it. He is going to have it published up fine, all in white, with gold end papers. Now I will say good night to you. Off to Pennygaff I am going in the morning with Waffa, Luggins, Mog, and Dove, fixed up with them to come and help me build up the old monastery again I have. But I will see you both soon, I am thinking. A few minutes after Brother Iato's departure, the Seljuk came to call. Ahem, he said politely. Should you care for it? My esteemed young lady, damsel, miss, I shall be only too delighted to take you back with me to rum and give you an honourable establishment there in requital for the signal services you have rendered, my little tribesman. I do thank your worship, Erebus replied. Most grateful I am for your offer, and I will be glad to visit you one day, but I am not wishful to leave Wales at present. And she made the same answer to Prince David when a little later he limped across from the inn and cordially invited her to come live with him in Windsor Castle, where the Prince of Wales would look after her with every care. But she gratefully accepted his offer to have the King at Carleone published it is a, at his own expense. After he had left, Mr. Hughes knocked on the wagon door and stumped in. He looked somewhat ill at ease, and his embarrassment was not lessened by finding Owen there with Hawk sitting on his head, and Abapal happily picking out simple tunes on the cruth. However, Mr. Hughes was not the man to shirk an unpleasant duty. Come to apologize, my dear, he said gruffly. Realize now I did you and your good father an injustice when you called it the museum, especially since it turns out the confound blessed heart belongs to you belonged to you all the time. Harump, heartily sorry for what I said, and he boggled a bit, but finally brought it out. Same goes for you too, Owen, my boy, misjudged you. Realize now you acted with good sense and spirit. His Highness has said some very pleasant things about you. He is going to send out an expeditionary force to look for your father. What do you think of that, eh? Owen's face lit up, but his joy was too deep for speech. Hope you'll come back and live with me at the museum, Mr. Hughes went on awkwardly. At the museum? Owen's was Owen was surprised. But Granda, I thought you were I thought you resigned. Had a message from the Penny Gaff Council today asking if I'd go back. Mr. Ho Mr. Hughes sniffed. Can't find anyone else to accept their ten shillings a year, I dare say. But what about it? And you too, Arabis, my dear. Do us good to have you with us, wouldn't it? Owen, brighten the dusty old place up a bit. His expression was so anxious and pleading that Arabis said warmly, Indeed, there is kind you are, Mr. Hughesbach, and I would like nothing better. Then I can be going to school and getting a bit of learning. But in the summertime, mind you, I must be going back on the road, or I will be forgetting where the healing herbs grow. And old Galahad out there will be growing stiff in the joints with him. And I'll come with you, Owen said. And you won't mind little Abapol, Erebus mentioned, taking up lodging with me. He do seem to have. Oh, not a bit, Mr. Hughes said. I dare say he will be a famous help in the museum, right then. I am glad to have settled that to have that settled and I will say good night. Greatly relieved, he creaked away through the snow. Erebus smiled faintly as she stood in the doorway looking after him. Owen came to join her. You won't mind living in Penny Gaff, he said anxiously. No, I shall be liking it, and Brother Ianto will be there. The Seljuk have given him a great sum of money to rebuild this monastery. The blizzard had blown itself out. Overhead, a clear moon rode among the stars. Downhill, the roofs of Mount Agardau gleamed silver, and beyond lay the forest mafwa, like a wi wide white counterpane. From inside the wagon came a musical plunk, as Abapal tightened a string and tried it. They stood silent, listening, and heard above them the gentle singing murmur of the whispering mountain, the voice of Fig Hat Ben talking in his sleep. Then Fig Hat Ben shall wear a shroud. Then shall the despoiler that was so proud plunge headlong 
down from the devil's leap. Then shall the children from darkness creep, and the, and the men of the glen avoid disaster, and the harp of Terra too find her master. And that's the end of The Whispering Mountain. I'm not sure quite how it's going to tie into the other books in the Wolves Chronicles, but it was a fun read, probably my my least favorite of the series that I've read you guys so far. I mean, this is only the third book, but there is more. I look forward to reading them. Have, if you're watching these as they come out, have a Merry Christmas, and I will see you in the next book.